full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, seat of wisdom, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And falling down, they adored him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When Jesus was 13 days old, the three kings were led by a star to come and adore him. Now the day is called the Epiphany. Now the word epi, the first three letters, This means from above, from the Greek. And the second part, phanos, which means appearing, because the star appeared from above, showing that the magi, or showing the magi, that the Christ was God. But who were these magi, and why the name magi? Well, magi is only a plural of the word magus, which stands for sorcery. St. John Chrysostom, though, says, The three wise men were called Magi because they were sorcerers, but were later converted. Now we know their names from the church fathers and from Catholic tradition as Caspar, Melchior, and Balthasar, and by the fact that they are canonized saints in the church. Now if you ever visit the cathedral in Cologne, Germany, you will see the largest reliquary in the world. And this reliquary contains the remains of these three saints, Caspar, or Saints Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. Now these three men were true kings, and they came to Jerusalem looking for the child that was born the king of Israel. But why did they go to Jerusalem if our Lord was not born there? St. Remigius gives four reasons for this. He says the first is that they knew the time of Christ's birth, but not the place. Jerusalem was the royal city where you would expect a king to be born. So this is why their first inclination was to go to Jerusalem. The second is that in Jerusalem is where all the scribes and those that know the law live. And this would be the place to find out where the child was born. So this is the second reason why they went. Now the third is that the Jews are left here without an excuse. So here we have divine providence. Now, they're left without an excuse, since otherwise they might have been able to say, well, we know the place of his birth, but we know not the time, and therefore we do not believe that he is the Messiah. So the Magi showed the Jews the time, and the Jews showed the Magi the place. Now, the fourth reason for this is that the Jews' indifference would be condemned by the Magi's jealous search for God. In other words, the zeal for these pagan kings searching for God serves as a judgment to those who call themselves his followers. So knowing these things, let us take a look at what caused the Magi to follow the star. Now, Eastern tradition tells us that the three kings were all descendants of Balaam, the prophet or the ancient prophet in the Old Testament, who prophesied in the book of Numbers the following. He said that a star shall rise out of Jacob and a man shall rise out of Israel. Now, St. John Chrysostom, on his commentary of St. Matthew, tells us that in the false religions of these three kings, they looked for what they believed were hidden secrets within the Eastern rites or within the, uh, within the world. So they were looking, you know, sort of like the Masons, into hidden things within the world. But, of course, it sent them off to all kinds of crazy uh, religions or false religions. But within this, they chose 12 men in number to go up to this place called the Mountain of Victory and stay there once a month for three days. And in that time, they would pray and they would fast and they would wash themselves. And they would do this to purify themselves so that God would give them the vision of this star. And eventually they were hoping that the star of Balaam, which had been foretold, would be shown to them. So on the day of our Lord's birth, while they were there, a star came to them above the mountain of victory, which had the shape of the most beautiful child. And above the head of this child was the most brilliant cross, And they understood this as the sign from God. 
Now the child spoke to these wise men, saying, Go to the land of Judah as fast as you can, and you will find there a newborn king whom you seek. And they went out right away. And it took them 13 days because they were led by their zeal for the truth and with the grace of God. And St. John Chrysostom says, The Lord chose to reveal His birth to them and to lead them to Himself, thereby extending to all sinners the hope of pardon. Now the Magi were entirely convinced that this was the call, or this call to follow the star was from God. Now the, the star spoke to their hearts and it gave them an inward grace and it brought them out of their country. Now there is no doubt that others saw the star as well. Of course it was very brilliant and its uncommon brightness would have lured anybody or attracted anybody's attention. But they were ignorant of the divine call in it. Now many had only seen the star and do not look for anything supernatural in this event. This is because most people just follow a natural way of viewing things and ignore the things that are supernatural. Now, a strictly natural way of living blinds us to the mysteries of faith. And many are unable to hear God's divine call because of our passions and our self-love. So these magi had to cut off any worldly objections that would take them away or delay them in any way from following the star. And they saw the great gift that they had received from God. And if they rejected it, they knew that might, they might never get it back. So when the wise men came to Jerusalem by the guidance of the star, they thought that they would find the newborn king right away. After all, this was the royal city. And they were all expecting the Messiah, right? What a joy they must have expected to see in the people of Jerusalem in knowing that the long-awaited king was now born to them. What cries and celebrations of happiness were they expecting from this nation and were this wise men expecting to see? But very quickly they realized well, how false this was. To their surprise, they entered the city of God without the least sign of solemnity or joy. What is going on in this nation that is expecting a king? Now the wise men left their own country and they had to explain to their own people why they were leaving. Because after all, they were, king, they were kings, they were in charge of great territories, and they had great families. So they needed to explain why they were leaving. Now they came to this city, which totally shocks them at the lack of concern for their own king. But this doesn't turn them away. They are still resolved to follow this divine call. And so they go right to Herod's palace. And they went with great confidence and humility at finding the truth. So they find Herod and they ask him, where is he who is to be born a king of the Jews? He ought to know he's a king. It's their prophecies. Now they didn't ask whether he'd be, he'd be born. That was a no-brainer. That was already revealed to the king, to the Magi. They were asking where is he to be born. They already knew that he was. And then as if someone had asked how they knew this, they continued, We have seen a star in the east and have come to adore him. Now clearly they saw that he was a king and that he was God since they came to adore him. And the only one worthy of adoration is God. And so they showed this by their appearance before the Jews. Now let us look at the faith and courage of these pagans these Gentiles, asking the Jews where their king is. The Jews know the law and the prophets. That is why the wise men went there to ask. They too knew Balaam's prophecy about the star because this was in their ancient scriptures. So Herod assembles all the intellectuals of the Jews, the scribes and the Pharisees. They know the law and the prophets, so they would be the ones to inform the wise men. So the great council of Jewish priests, the Sanhedrin, unanimously show them what or where they will find this answer in Scripture. They said to them, In Bethlehem of Judah. For so it is written by the prophet Micaiah, But you, Bethlehem, from you shall come forth me, one who is to be the ruler in Israel. This is the Holy Spirit speaking through the prophet Micaiah. 
They point to the place. They're like a road sign to the Magi. They tell the Magi where their king is to be born. But the Jews don't go there themselves to adore the Christ child. This is the indifference that St. Remigius speaks of that serves to condemn the Jews. They know where the Messiah is now because the wise men, they know by their, own, by their own words and they know the time because of the Magi. Now God may have been giving them the graces to go too, but these graces are lost on worldly and hardened souls. Now all Jerusalem, instead of rejoicing at these words, are alarmed and disturbed together with Herod. St. John Chrysostom says, The Magi believed in one prophet, while the Jews refused to believe in a number of them. The Magi looked for a foreign king. The Jews did not look for their own. The Magi came at a great distance. The Jews lived close, close by. Then St. John Chrysostom goes on to say, they are burdened with the weight of their honors. In other words, their pride and their dignity will not have them to go worship this child. But the wise men are filled with joy because now they know where the child is and they find this child. And these men, being kings also, lower themselves like servants and slaves and fall down on their faces on their faces, to adore the Christ child. St. Leo praises their devotion and faith. He says, When a star conducted them to adore Jesus, they did not find Him commanding devils, or raising the dead, or restoring sight to the blind, or speech to the dumb, or employed in any divine actions. But a silent babe, under the care of a solicitous mother, giving no sign of power, but exhibiting the miracle of humility. He calls it the miracle of humility. They didn't need all these signs and wonders, just the miracle of humility. So now they see things in a different way. So Scripture tells us they went back another way because they went back in faith, not by the ways of the world, but by the ways of God. So they did not return to Herod, who represents the world, but went straight to God. In fact, the fathers of the church tell us that later, these three wise men, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, were baptized in Persia by St. Thomas the Apostle. And they became preachers of the gospel, and they were raised to the office of bishops. God gave them a great grace, and they did not squander it. They truly sought the truth. Now the Magi brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the greater gift that they would bring is their faith and the holy reverence and the holy dispositions of their hearts and souls to adore their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.